Okay, this should be coming out. What is today? What? Sunday? Yeah. This should be coming out Sunday. Now, I was going to record this earlier, but similar to yesterday, or not, not yesterday. Wait, was it yesterday? Whatever day it was. I was busy. Yeah, it was yesterday. I was busy and didn't have time to record except for part one to the Naruto series, which I actually kind of like the idea of because people kind of think, well, you've, people do kind of think that because Sakura is useless, they call her useless, and since she learned medical ninjutsu, that it's useless. Have you seen Tsunade? Do you see how strong she is? She's done more than some of the main characters, actually. So, and that's, like, if not enough people actually, like, watch the video, I'm gonna be upset because I like that video. Unless it's being suppressed by YouTube, which it might, who knows, because YouTube does suppress videos sometimes. Anyway, on to part two to what if Deku, or, or what if Aizawa was Deku's dad. Now, we skip, and, well, Deku would be the first person to get to the classroom, because, well, if Aizawa is going to UA, then Deku's going to also go, because, what's the point in just Aizawa going? So, Deku and Aizawa would go, and Deku would have his own sleeping bag, it'd probably be green, and he'd be, basically... In a desk with the sleeping bag around him, just sleeping. And basically, when everyone's there, people are like, Who is this? Why do they have a sleeping bag? And when Aizawa finally basically gets up, because Deku never gets up as early as Aizawa makes him, so he's like, Oh crap, I probably should have made him get used to getting up this early. So he goes over and basically wakes Deku up. He's like, get up. And Deku just quickly, in like one swift movement, takes the sleeping bag off. And he has long hair similar to Aizawa. He has his eyes dark. He looks tired and depressed just like Aizawa. But no one puts it together yet. So... As Aizawa was talking, Deku was slowly rolling up his sleeping bag, and Deku already knows what's going on. So I think he'd already actually be in his, well, I think he'd already be in the, uh, well, the clothes. He's already be, he'd already be in the training clothes. Mainly because I think he'd probably already be training, because, well, why not? So, people are wondering why is he wearing that, and... Basically, as I would say, see, basically all of you are going to be wearing this suit because we will be doing a quirk, uh, the quirk examination test, or whatever it's called, quirk assessment test, there we go. I blanked out for a second, but he'd say we will be doing a quirk assessment test, and, you know, they would still say, or someone would still say, but are we supposed to go to the assembly? Aizawa says, you're here to become heroes. My, we have to start today. There's no point in going to the simile and all that. So, I don't think Deku got first. I think he got second. But, we skip. And overall, Deku is able to do a lot. Deku, since he'd have and would do a lot of, well, conditioning training. And a lot of, well... Just muscle training in general. He'd be taller than Bakugo in this. And would have a... Oh, I should mention. I'm pretty sure I said Ida's Deku's friend. Ida knows that Aizawa is Deku's dad. He knows this. Because he'd probably go over to Deku's house here and there. And Aizawa might pick uh, Deku up. So yeah. Ida's going to know that Aizawa is Deku's dad. So yeah. So, we skip, and 
overall, Deku does pretty high. He does above most of the people with emitter type quirks. Even those with mutation types, he's still able to do a lot more than them. Just because, well, he already knew what the test was going to be. <laughs> so he was able to prepare. When it comes to jumping, you he'd actually be very good at the long jump and the uh, 50 meter dash. Because of one reason. Training with the uh, scarf using the scarf, Deku would have to do a lot of training. Yes, he'd be trained by Izawa, and they wouldn't need to rush the training with it, but he would do a lot of intense training with it. One would basically be, like, how far or how high you can jump, and running, Deku would just, well, do a lot of stamina training. So, one thing, Deku, so he can get used to it more, would probably be parkour. So, Deku was able to jump a lot farther and higher than most people would actually think you with just like raw strength. He's, I'm going to say, third in the class when it comes to speed. When it comes to just jumping, he's fourth. The ball throw, he's going to be like fifth or even sixth just because, well, a lot of the people aren't able to do much with their quirks. There's only a couple people that actually are able to use their quirk in the ball throw. But overall, Deku doesn't look that strong to most of the people because his quirk doesn't really, well, it doesn't fit this situation. If he wanted, he could have canceled people's quirks while they were using them so that they wouldn't work. But he's trying to make it as fair as possible. Technically, Aizawa never said anything that you couldn't do that, so Deku could have. Now, All Might would be watching, and he's looking at all the, well, he'd be looking at all his students, and he notices that, well, Deku is pretty built for his age. Like, yes, there are students in the class that are much more muscular, but that's because of their quirk. But Deku, he looks like he's only using physical strength. All Might doesn't know what his quirk is. And, well, his quirk could be that strong. But then he remembers, he's like, oh yeah, his quirk's a cancellation quirk. I forgot, because All Might would basically go in a full brain-dead moment. So he would basically forget that he forgot what Deku's quirk was, a cancellation quirk. And then, because All Might's been in Deku's life before, he's seen to Deku as somewhat like an uncle. So, All Might would start thinking, would Deku be a good, like, a good candidate for one for all? I mean, Deku's quirk is powerful, but if Deku wants to be a good hero, and even a popular hero, which I think Deku would, he wouldn't be number, he wouldn't want to be number one, but he wouldn't want, he would want to be a well-known hero. He would think that Deku with his quirk alone, he could be pretty well known, but there are always going to be thing that, things that limit him from other people. The limitation of his quirk is, well, his quirk is a lot of limitations actually. He can look people in the eye until his eyes are basically dried up until he has to blink, or he can, well, yeah, or he can psychically, you know, uh, cancel someone's quirk but it will give him very bad headaches to the point to where like if he uses it too much he could probably pass out or even start getting nosebleeds from using it too much so he starts to think Deku is a good candidate but there's also other kids in class 1A that are also good candidates and you know when Aizawa walks off, because overall Deku does pretty well, he's he's in the top, well, five of the class so far. So yeah, when Aizawa goes off, he doesn't say picking favorites already to All Might like he does in canon, but instead 
he asks All Might what's he's, what is he doing, should he be preparing for teaching, and, well, All Might would just say he's just looking at the students, so he knows what he's working with. And we skip to the, well, Hero vs. Villains combat training. It'd be the same teams, and at this point, no one knows what Deku's quirk is except for Ida. And they go in, and when Deku goes in, he'd have a suit not exactly the same as in canon. It'd be similar, it'd basically just be Aizawa's suit, but on Deku's body. And to fit Deku as well, Deku would have his goggles like Aizawa, and would have the scarf, and people were like, what's... What is this kid like quirk? Or does he even have a quirk? They don't really know. And this is when, at this point, Ida and Deku do have a rivalry because in canon, Ida basically said that, he, like in the sports festival, that he wanted to be Deku's rival. He wanted to compete with Deku. So they would be, at this point, full fledged rivals. And Ida, and Ida would go up to Deku and basically say, Time to see who's the stronger one. And Deku basically tells Ida that, well, we've been training for a couple years now. I guess we could see who's stronger out of the two of us. But let's not try to break too many bones, okay? It's only training. And Ida would laugh, Deku would laugh because. They've broken bones, especially Ida kicking Deku in the ribs. And forgetting, oh crap, he has no way to defend, especially when, it's, when he has to release his quirk. But half the time, Deku beats Ida, like just beats him up in their training. So, we skip, and it would be... Well, Bok, Go, and Ida trying to make a plan, well, mostly Ida. And Ida would have to basically wait, because Bakugo doesn't want to wait for Ida. Well, Deku and Ida both ignored Bakugo right before beginning, and Baku wants to know what Deku's quirk is. Does he think he's so better than everyone that he doesn't have to show his quirk or even use it? Now... At this point, everyone knows what, well, they wouldn't know what Aizawa's quirk is. The reason they wouldn't know is because since Deku doesn't have one for all and he didn't break his, uh, or he didn't, he wasn't going to break his arm using it, Aizawa didn't have to cancel Deku using one for all. And since Bakugo wouldn't attack Deku, because there'd be no reason for Bakugo to attack Deku in this, during the quirk assessment test, he wouldn't use his quirk, so there's really no reason for... Aizawa to use his quirk, so no one would know what his quirk is. And as for Deku, they don't know what his quirk is, they don't know what Deku's quirk is, but at this point, people that have heard Deku's last name, uh, hold on, G give me a second, okay, sorry about that. Now, I think some people from hearing Ida say Deku's full name, and when they would see the scores for the quirk assessment test, they would see Deku's name as Izuku Aizawa. I'm pretty sure Aizawa is the last name because they call him Mr. Aizawa. So, wouldn't that be his last name? Or because his name is Shota Aizawa, right? Or I forget. Just tell me what his last name is in in the comments. I forget. Pretty sure it's Aizawa. If not, it's weird. Anyway, so oh my shoulder just destroyed itself. So well Deku would basically go, Baku would appear, and some people at this point would probably put it together because Mr. Aizawa, Izuku Aizawa. And Deku would everyone would call him Izuku because he wouldn't have the nickname Deku in this. But I'm just going to call him Deku for my sake. So, the moment Baku appears, Deku tells Oraka to run. Deku puts on his goggles. And the moment 
Deku finishes putting on his goggles. Well, Bakugo rushes Deku. And Deku basically uh, dodges. He just basically just falls straight to the ground because of how flexible he is. And I think you do a bit of flexible or a little uh, just training how flexible he'd be. So he dodged Bakugo, who would basically go right over him, who would try to basically shoot forward with his explosions and throw a explosion-fueled, uh, uh, was it like a right hook? Deku would just go to the ground, and he'd get back up. Bakugo would turn around using his explosions, would shoot back at Deku, and Deku would not go to the ground, but just lean back. And then would cut Bakugo's quirk off by looking at him in his eyes. And Bakugo quickly trying to explore Deku. He's like, his quirk isn't working. And to make sure he can go back and just try and hit Deku, his quirk is just not working for some reason. He tries to shoot an explosion to slow him down or even stop where he is, but it's not working. So each time Deku is basically just, just standing there and blocking what... Well, not blocking, but mostly just dodging what Baku is doing. They're wondering why isn't he using his quirk, and someone like Momo would probably put it together by now, but a lot of the other people wouldn't. And, well, it gets to the point where Deku's already bored of this fight. See, Bakugo's moves are already predictable. He has very plain moves. He shoots forward with his explosions and tries to right hook you. These are basic fighting moves that, like, even someone without training would probably do. So, well, Deku quickly, just out of nowhere, jumps. And he doesn't, even, he doesn't even jump as high as possible. He just jumps to where his legs are already to, well, Baku's height. And just kicks Bakugo in the head. Which would basically have Bakugo sent flying against the wall and would do a lot of damage Baku would pull his gauntlets up to protect him from hitting against the wall completely and this is when Baku says you did something to my quirk didn't you and he basically says fine take this it has to do something similar to my quirk but I can use it without it as he basically pulls up his gauntlet and all like similar to him can basically say don't do it because he's gonna die. Baku would say he won't die if he dodges. And the moment the well, the moment the good old explosion is well sent at Deku, Deku quickly just gets out of the way. He just quickly dodges because that's all he can do. And doing this, he'd accidentally blink because he need not even accidentally. He'd do it because at this point. Well, his quirk, or his eyes would be hurting. So he'd stop, and Bakugo wouldn't use his quirk, because he wouldn't know if it's back or not. And Deku would basically charge it. Bakugo would, before Bakugo can even get the second gauntlet up, Deku basically just throws one of the ends of the scarf at Bakugo's arm and basically throws Bakugo's arm with the gauntlet to the side because it's going to have a lot more weight because it's full. The other gauntlet is now empty so it's a lot lighter. So most of Bakugo's strength and imbalance is put on that one side. So Deku just grabs that side and just makes it to where it's even more imbalanced. Bakugo would be able to stop and by the time he stops Deku's already well, in front of him, and just knees him in the stomach, then quickly using his scarf, grabs Baku's body and slams him into the ground. So, let's say Deku went behind Baku after kneeing him in the stomach, using his scarf, which is slightly wrapped around Baku already, throws Bakugo over his shoulder and pins him to the ground. Deku, knowing since it won't count since he's in his scarf, he has to get the tape out and put it around him. He'd try and do that, but Bakugo would try and use his quirk and would basically shoot forward. And this is when Deku's like, crap, he has his quirk back now. And he knows he has his quirk, so I shouldn't. he's like, I should wait until using my quirk 
for a bit longer. So, when Bakugo comes at Deku again, Bakugo would basically shoot at Deku. Wouldn't wait. He would wait to throw an attack. He'd just get as close to Deku as possible before taking a well, a note from Deku's book and trying to knee Deku in the stomach. But Deku, basically, well, training with Aizawa, who'd probably do the same thing, would quickly just dodge out the way of the attack. It would probably even grab the leg that Baku tried to knee Deku with, and would grab it and just throw Baku onto the ground again. And in this, Baku's just outmatched because Deku has more experience fighting, and, oh, Baku's attacks are simple. It gets to the point where Deku isn't even tired and Baku's already hurt because Deku's just throwing him against the ground. We skip, and halfway through, half of the time's done, and Deku is a bit burned from some of the explosions, but nothing else. He still hasn't used his quirk, so he's going to save his eyes for now, and uses his, well, psychic link. So he would cut off Bakugo's quirk psychically, and after a while, well, after a while, good old Bakugo would basically be like, what's going on? I can't use my quirk again. He's like, his quirk must be some type of quirk cancellation, or it's just he can make it to where I can't use my quirk periodically. He's thinking of this, and he's like, what is he doing? And then Deku would basically just wail on Bakugo for a couple of seconds before getting the tape out and putting it around Bakugo, which would count as him being out. And this would anger Bakugo. But during this time, Oraka would, well, she would get out by Ida because Ida would be a lot faster. He'd be a lot stronger and smarter, especially when it comes to fighting. Now, when Deku gets up there, Oraka's out and it's. Deku, who's a lot more damaged than Ida, especially since Ida has armor on, and it's those two versus each other. Deku does have a slight headache from using his, well, psychic link to cut off Bakugo's quirk, but they're just staring at each other for a second before Ida comes bursting at Deku, and Deku runs, or not runs, but basically just stands there, gets his scarf ready, and when Ida gets prepared to not even throw a high or a low kick, just aims for Deku's, uh, like, ribs, Deku quickly grabs his scarf, and he basically wraps the scarf around his hands to make somewhat of, like, a small net. So it's just wrapped around his hands, and he blocks it, and there's no way Ida's gonna break this material, because look at how strong Aizawa's scarf is, it's the same exact material. So Deku blocks the kick, but he's pushed back a little, but he quickly puts the scarf around Ida's leg and throws Ida over his shoulder. And it's mostly like this for a couple of seconds, Deku just blocking Ida's kick before Ida changes it up, and instead of going for a kick, he just basically starts spinning, like he's about, like he's trying to do a kick, but quickly goes from looking like he's about to do a kick to punching Deku in his ribs, and he basically was spinning in a circle, boosting his well, speed, making himself dizzy a bit with his engines, and basically just punched Deku in the ribs. So yeah, Deku would be hurt, but after realizing what just happened, he's like, so Ida decided to use his hands for once. He's like, I'll use my legs a bit more. As what he would do is Deku would do a, what was it like a, I thought, I forgot what it was called, like a flying triangle chokehold or whatever it's called. Basically, Deku basically grabs Ida's arms, and not arms, but grabs Ida's neck with his legs and is basically choking Ida. And people are like, what is he doing as, I think the, I uh, forgot his name, the tail guy, I forgot his name, but he would basically say it's some type of chokehold, he's 
choking him. But it'd be hard for Deku to do that mostly because he had his armor protecting him. But he would be able to do it somewhat as Ida would basically run into a wall hitting Deku. And this is when Deku, before Ida can run into, ram Deku into a wall again, would quickly jump back. And this is when he puts his plan into action because at this point, the item that Deku left near the entrance is still there. He has Bakugo's other gauntlet, because Bakugo didn't use it. Technically, there's nothing against using that. So, Deku, since he'd still be close to the entrance, would basically jump off of Ida, right next to the door, and he'd run out. Ida, basically thinking this must be some sort of trap, but it's probably the only time he can do this, he quickly uses his quirk to, because he's testing it to see if Deku cut off his quirk yet, he runs at Deku. Deku already put the gauntlet on. And this is when Deku basically, instead of, well, instead of shooting at Ida, Deku's like, well, Bakugo at his, well, Bakugo used his quirk to shoot him forward. I don't know why you can't do something similar with this. As he basically just uses the gauntlet to, as, well, Ida goes down the hall. He wasn't able to really see Deku with the gauntlet on. Deku would pull the pin, and the explosion would have enough force to launch Deku right next to Ida. And Deku would basically knee Ida in the face, but since he has the helmet on, it hurt Deku more than Ida. But it would be enough to rattle Ida's brain for a second. As Deku basically runs past Ida, quickly tripping him using his scarf, and gets to the bomb, and which is... Right before Ida could get to him, touch the bomb, counting as him and Oraka winning. Now, Deku would have a much easier time if, well, if he didn't have to deal with Bakugo. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. If you want to see more, then uh, subscribe. You don't have to, but I greatly appreciate it. Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye, and have a wonderful time.